Now y'all already know what time it is. It is time for the mess, so let's get into it. on you guys this be your boy scotty by nature tv and we are here for a brand new episode of yes for the mess to speak on it edition okay so we're here to recap and talk about candy speak on it with none other than her group mate tamika scott okay now this is practically my first time looking at it so i'm gonna be watching it with y'all and y'all know how i do my commentary on speak on it y'all know i play some of it i stop it give commentary to continuously play it and all those things like that. So shout out to Candy um, for doing the speak on it. It gives me some content. It gives me something to talk about. I share my opinions with my Scotty gang and all of that good stuff. Now, I don't have no church announcements right now, but I will say if you are, this is your first time tuning in to Scotty by Nature TV, make sure you guys click that subscription bell. Make sure you guys are subscribed Turn on, turn on your notifications. You get a video every single day almost. It's consistent content all the time. You get at least three videos a day most of the time, okay? You get panels. You get lives. You get all of those good things. So make sure you guys are subscribed to my platform. And also, if you want to be a member and you want to join my membership, there's exclusive content like me and my ex. Um, that's a that's a show that I do with um that I'm filming with some of my ex-boyfriends. That the first episode of me and my ex is already on um in my members only. I'll be reading novels that I wrote, okay? Um, and one should be, I'll be reading two chapters a day. Um, the synopsis of the book is already in the members only. So make sure you guys are doing that. Join the membership. It's going to be amazing. A lot of exclusive content for you guys. So with that being said, we're about to go ahead and get into speak on it. All right. So um, let's watch it. Let's get into it, you guys. Let's let's get into this thing. I'm glad we reconnected. Me too. First, let me say that. Because now I feel like we be closer than ever now. Yes. But, you know, I just wanted to kind of catch people back up because, you know, during the course of filming our last show, Queens R&B, you know, we talked about a few things that happened. Obviously, we, we're we still healing as a group from things that have happened in the past. First of all, Candy, right either now. you in or you out. That's why I just kind of wanted to, like, touch on, okay, what was happening during that break of time that, we weren't together or people may not have had the chance to see you get people caught up on Tamika. What, what was going on in Tamika's life girl. during that period? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, girl, I was going through a divorce. <laughs> I was oh going God. through a divorce. Like I started dating uh, Ocean and, and Naya's dad when I was like 16. Mm -hmm. So we were, I was young, got mm -hmm. pregnant, got married. We didn't get married because we was in love. We got married because you're know, from the church. You know, it's like you don't want to um, have your baby out of wetlock. So it's more. I didn't even know what being in love was. Child, that's not what you had the guys thinking. But okay, yeah, yeah she had, had everybody had, thinking they wasn't. Don't love. say everybody now. It wasn't a lot. <laughs> Who else she dated? Right, seriously, the, the crazy one. And I think so, he was the one I thought I was gonna marry, girl. But honey, really? his parents was like, uh, uh. That was crazy. That was crazy. Now the men that you dated in your past definitely love you your husband loves oh yeah i love him girl. you know <laughs> so you definitely have an impact on the people who whose lives you have touched Aww. i would definitely say thank that you boo for thank sure. you i agree because i see a lot of myself in tamika like She's the one, you know, she's the funny one, you know, she's the one with all this personality and, but she's also the one that gets overlooked, that gets slighted in a sense. She's that girl. And I understand her like just watching. But as I said, outside of Candy, Tamika was always uh, one of my favorite members out of the group all the time. I don't know what it was. It's just always been something about Tamika that makes me feel connected to her, you know? I don't know what it is, but I love Tamika. Let's continue, y'all. Okay, I'm going to ask. So when it was just the three of you for a very long time, meaning you, Tiny, Tasha. Okay. What was y'all doing as a group? I became mm. you. What does that mean? 
<laughs> for the people. I, I mean, you told me to boil up to the people. I was you. They were going out to eat without me. They wasn't telling me stuff they were doing. I said, I feel like candy right now. I just feel like an outcast. I used to tell them all the time. I used to joke with even A1. I used to joke with him. I was like, dang, I feel like candy now. I ain't getting no invitation to go out to eat. I'm just stuck in my room. And oh, that was happening even after our first reality show when yeah. I went to do Broadway. Mm -hmm. And you was it was just three of y'all. It was just a three concert. of us. So it was always yeah. them two together, and then I was left by myself. Well, okay. I'm gonna have to ask you. If oh wow! So this happened after Still Kicking It when they was Escape Three when they put out the Here For It EP and Candy went off doing her own thing. They began to treat Tamika the same way that Candy was being treated in the past. And that is crazy to hear because you know that Candy has always spoken on her experience with the group Escape and always talked about how always talked about how she felt like an outcast and she felt like, you know, she wasn't appreciated or that she didn't belong. And then when she was gone, Tamika started feeling the same exact way. That's crazy. Let's continue. If you know you felt that way during that time, and you said, I said, y'all treat you me said, like candy. So you knew yes. when I would say those things in the past that there was some truth to what yeah, I was saying. It was. Yeah, we treated you like outcasts. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Now, no, I, a lot of people thought I that did, I was and, like, I did. And I was like, it was almost like if I got too close, mm -hmm. I was too close. That's not your sister. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to bag up some. So it was like we started out as really. OK, so basically what Tamika is, Tamika literally just admitted that all the things that Candy said about her being the outcast of the group was actually true. She did admit that she was treated as an outcast, but she said, but I didn't treat you like an outcast. But it felt like if I got way too close to you, then it'll be like, OK. I'm defying my sister. You're not my sister, so I can't get that close to you. It's one of those things where I think that it's one of them things like family should always be closer to you than friends. That's one of those things that it comes across like to me. Like she comes from one of those type of families where, you know, you ain't got no friends. You ain't got no friends. You ain't got no friends. But what's so crazy about it is some of my friends, like my real friends, are more so like my family. Like some of my friends are more like brothers and sisters to me than some of my own siblings, honestly. Like Jamar has been my good friend for like best friend for 10 years. And he is uh, close to my age and he's better to me than my own one of, than, than some of my brothers that's close to me. Everybody know me and my baby brother like this, you know, but he's better to me than some of my own siblings. Just like, you know, um, Josiah is better to me than some of my siblings. It's just like, it's crazy when you have a friend that is so, they're like family at this point, like period. You know what I mean? So I get it. And But Tamika didn't want to get too close because it's like, that ain't none of your sister. And I believe she was starting to see Candy as something similar to a sister. Sometimes you see that in friends. You know what I mean? Sometimes you do see that in friends. Let's continue. Really, really good friends. Spending night over each other's house before mm. we even started singing. Like going out to parties together, just spending time together. Mm. And we had a, we formed a sisterhood. Yeah, you and I connected yes, first. We connected right. first. So we was always together all the time. So mm. once the business got into it, it was almost like, okay, you got a sister in the group. So you can't go against your sister, mm -hmm. even though when it comes to business. And it was times that I wanted to vote with you and Tiny, but I felt like I was not being loyal if I voted against my sister. Mm -hmm. And then Tiny came in. So it was like sometimes she was on our side. Sometimes she was on your side. So the times when she wasn't on your side, you was the outcast. Right. And just to be uh, fair, like, even though I didn't like it, I understood it. Mm -hmm. Because I understand, you know, family sticks together or whatever. But just being on the other side of that, it used to be very frustrating. Now that we're adults, some of these things. Are now, this is the part where I have to give Candy just a little bit. When she says that it's being on the outside of it is a little frustrating because of the fact that Tamika admitted that there will be times when she wanted to vote on the side of Candy and Tiny. But if she did, she would feel like she wasn't being loyal to her big sister. And Candy saying that she understood that, but being on the other side of it, it was very frustrating. It was very, 
irritating that that was going on. Now, how do you think Todd feels when you side with Mama Joyce a lot of the times just because that's your mama, even though she's wrong? You side with her, but you don't, you know what I'm saying? But you really want to side with your husband because you know your husband is on the side of right, but because you don't want to come across or be deemed as disrespectful or being a turncoat, you still don't address the things that your mother does. You know what I mean? Like, I think you're starting to see how, you know what I mean? It, it all goes in the same twisted situation. You know what I mean? Tamika didn't want to vote against her sister because that's her sister. You don't want to speak against your mother because that's your mom. So both of y'all got that in common in a sense, if you really ask me. But we can continue. Things are playing out in front of the world. I have caught the blame sometimes for you and your sister not getting along or whatever. So I just want to ask you, do I be making you say or do no. anything? No. <laughs> no, you don't. You do not. No, and I don't know why you get blamed for a lot. I know I be reading comments that has nothing to do with escape. Right. And it'd be a whole nother situation. They'd be like, well, Candy. I was like, well, dang, she getting blamed for something. Our group and outside, they always, it's always this, this raining outside. You did it. Oh, Lord. Here we go. <laughs> it don't matter what. <laughs> Candy did it. I made a joke like that the other day. Something happened. Mm -hmm. Me and my husband was home. Something happened. And I said, you know, Candy did it. And he didn't get it at first. And then he said, Oh, you crazy girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's candy fault. <laughs> so it's just it does now that is true. Everything is candy fault. For her to be so boring and for her to be this and that, people do give her way too much power. For her to be such a boring ass person with no personality, dry as hell, and got nothing going on, they do give her a lot of power. For her to be so damn boring, she y'all give her too much. And I'm even saying that. Okay. Let's continue. Just kind of like funny to me when I see those comments or I hear those things. How do you um, do it though? I think for me, it's I guess being on the housewives for a very, very long time has got me used to dealing with Girl. you know negativity from people that I don't even know sometimes. And then sometimes, you know, from people that you be going back and forth with, you know, you have to learn how to get tough skin. I'll be trying to tell that to you because I know you allow everything to get to you. Girl, I'll be like, when I see stuff, I'll be like, I'll, I'll, then I'll let it sit for a while till they see it. And then I'll erase it and then I'll block. But I'll be like, you ain't finna come on my page thinking you gonna say what you wanna say. But sometimes I'll be like, all right, let me just block. I ain't got, I ain't got all day to go back and forth with these people. Yeah, so I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning and I'm trying to get tough skin. But I'm like, why? Like, what's the I'm still learning too, Tamika. I just got to be real with you. I'm still learning. Um, it is, it is kind of hard when you got people that don't know you constantly judging you and putting all these different things on you. Like they really believe that you eat, sleep and breathe the things that they say. Now, there have been times, I ain't gonna lie, it was one time I remember reading something about me. Someone said that I look malnutrition and that I look like I had AIDS and that shit fucked me up. I was upset the entire day. <laughs> I was upset the entire day. My feelings was dead smack hurt, okay? Like dead smack hurt because I used to be real, real skinny and I'm still kind of skinny now, but I didn't gain a little bit of weight. So it's kind of like, you know, back then I used to be very insecure about every damn thing. Like I was bony as fuck, you know, I, my chip, my teeth was chipped. So it was like, there was some things that people could read me about and they would take that moment, especially if I say something that they didn't like, I, they'll take that moment and read the hell out of me and just go in. And sometimes they'll go so low, like the whole AIDS thing and malnutrition thing and all this other stuff like that would really get to me. A lot that would really get to me or, you know, is even now, like I'm working through the whole, um, the whole thing about you're a woman hater, you're a woman hater that used to bother me too. And it still kind of does, but I'm starting to get past the whole being offended by that. I mean, it's, it's just like when they, some, when somebody called me baby Kevin, Sam, Kevin Samuels last year, that was just, that was just it for me. I'm like, okay, people just going to talk out their ass. So it's, it takes a lot to get, I know they get it way more than me though. They're, they're more known than me. They got way more followers than me, but even on this small scale, it could be a lot. 
So I am one to admit that I can be a tad bit sensitive. It'd be like, but bro, you don't even know me. But then again, I don't know these people that I'm talking about right now, but I have strong opinions about them. So I got to put myself in that seat because I'm opening myself to, to the public eye or to, 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 to just the public period. I'm opening up myself to that. So when I'm opening up myself to that, I got to get ready for the consequences that come along with it. You know what I mean? That's just the truth. I got, I got to get ready for the consequences that come along with the BS. You're going to have your lovers and you're going to have the people that can't stand you. You're going to have some people that, finds any reason to hate you, no matter what you do, they're going to hate you. And as much as they hate you, they still watching. So what does it matter? They could put a coin in your pocket. So that's why I'm coming with it at this point. I still got a ways to go. Like I said, I've been on this whole emotional journey since May. You know what I mean? It's been a lot going on in my life since May and I'm slowly but surely coming out of that dark ass place that I was in. So I still, it's, it's just been like a healing, a, a journey to, or a path to healing in a sense. Like I'm learning to not really let too many things bother me or get to me or just allowing people to walk away from me if they that's what they want to do. You know what I mean? So I get it, but we're going to go ahead and continue on. Let's Let's continue. The purpose. I don't know, but I know with you, it's just like, I be, I be feeling so bad for you sometimes because I know this is a new thing for you, yeah, it is. new world that you're coming in. But I think it's something that you do need to try to get used to because people like seeing you on TV. They do. You have made a real impact on people, and especially since the last show came out. People sure, love, show. you know, they got a chance to see the fun no, side of you. Not and, what y'all saw on the last show. Well, they saw some of the craziness too, but I mean, I feel like all people have a good side and a crazy side. I think we all do. So I just feel like once you get comfortable in the fact that you can just be you mm -hmm. and not care about what anybody yeah. has said about it, then you be all right. Yeah. I'm good on that end. It's just a, I don't think you're going to say what you want to say to me and I ain't going to clap back. <laughs> I can go repent afterwards, but sometimes I be, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to. I'm a work in progress. Speaking of the show, Candy and I were great friends before Escape started. Tiny and I was too. I brought them to my sister. We all hung out. We had a good time. We got in trouble together. How did you feel about going into the process of filming the show? So going into it, I really felt like, okay, it was a great idea. Us, SWV, the idea of us doing a show together to, you know, iconic groups really come together. I I didn't see the negative side. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the first scene that my sister, well, one of the scenes my sister and I shot, I didn't think that it would have gone the way it went. That's why I brought Ocean. A lot of people like, why would she bring her daughter? First of all, my daughter's grown. Mm -hmm. She is 29 years old. She's grown. And I brought her to that scene because my sister and I had yet, we hadn't talked since the uh, Vegas. Me and her Vegas. fell out in Vegas mm -hmm. over business. I had one off on which was her personal assistant who was being our role manager at the time who left us. So I spazzed out on him and she took up for him and me and her got into it and we didn't talk for a while. Mm -hmm. So even before filming, I was like, okay, I was calling. She wasn't answering. I called my mom. I'm like, we, before we start filming this new show, we need to make up. Mm -hmm. Cause I didn't want us to be bickering and arguing on the show. I just didn't. It didn't make sense, but she didn't want to, she didn't want to do it. She mm -hmm. told tiny. Oh, they gonna see me turn up. I'm turning up on them. So I told tiny, she turned up on who me and Candy for what? Like, <laughs> What you turn it up for? So it was already premeditated. So when I did the scene with her and I came in the house, I was actually glad to see her. She looked real pretty. I've never seen her in heels. You know how my sister dress. She doesn't dress up. Mm -hmm. Well, well that, she did during the season. Yeah, for the season. Too. So my first time seeing her, she had on heels. She had a cute little makeup. I was like, oh, you was. I was like, hey, you look pretty, but it was like real stiff. It was like, and it was like from that moment, it was attack mode. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? When I sat down, she was like, you think you're better than everybody? You don't know how to talk to people. So I was sitting there like. We really doing this right now in front of the cameras. Like, <laughs> first of all, who you think you're talking to? Because that's not even who I am. Nobody in this world can say I made them feel like I was better than them. That's mm -hmm. just not who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. So she, she started saying all that. Then my mom started doing all this to me and took the phone out my hand. It was one scene where they both walked up on me and she was like, What you want? What you running for? So it was like I sat there and I was I felt attacked the whole time. It was like an hour in. So when the world saw me blow up, mm -hmm. it was like, Oh, she acting, oh, she, that's a Tyler Perry. Like, no, I got tired of being beat up on. I was attacked that whole scene. They did say that was a Tyler Perry film because when you said when when when, when, when she stole my money, mama got quiet, just like she quiet now. They did say that was a Tyler Perry thing. They did say that. So that means you really do be reading the comments. You really do. And for those of you that are probably wondering, I forgot to speed it up. <laughs> you know, I normally when I do these speak on it recaps or the Carlos King recaps, I normally speed it up a little bit. I forgot to speed it up. So 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. And I'm not going to start this over. So I say, you know what? Whatever happens, the fuck happens. We're going to do it the best way we can because I'm not starting this over. It's almost midnight, too. I am not about to start this thing over. So, yeah. But let's continue. Scene. Like everybody, it got to the point where my daughter Ocean got up and walked out of the scene. Mm -hmm. She couldn't take it. She got up and walked out of the scene, and the, the producers were like, "Go back in there and help your mom." <laughs> Not help your mama. They said, "They said go in there and help your mama." And she was like, "She was Ocean is that child that's like real laid back. She's like the peacemaker." Now, yeah. had them in young Naya. That's my girl right there. <laughs> it would have went. It would have been different. You know what I mean? Because she's fed up. You know, she's fed up with the situation of the world. It's just not getting a taste of they've been living it. So it's like to see your mom go through certain things, and I still tell them, hey, you still gotta love, you still gotta respect. But the hurt that they go through, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't, I can't explain that. But had not even there the world, I'm glad she wasn't because they would have been like, oh, she's so disrespectful. They would have thought she was just going off, just go off. They didn't see mm -hmm. everything that happened. They didn't see my mom and my sister walking up on me, and I'm walking behind the couch. Well, they cut in any scene, especially explosive scenes. Mm -hmm. It's like you only get about three minutes of a conversation that was three hours. Right. You know, so it's always tough when you watch it back because you'd be like, that's not how I went. They should have showed this or they should have showed that. From the jump, like early on when the season started, you guys, you know, clearly started having some serious turmoil. And not to mention the topic of the $30,000 came up in their very yes. first. And the reason why, let me tell you, a lot of people, like, I, a lot of people like, how you going to throw your sister on the bus? How you going to talk about your family like that? Like, I was attacked. And I knew she was saying all this stuff that wasn't true about me. And I was like, okay, if I say this one thing that's true, I know how to shut them up. Well, my mom was like, well, I got your back when? Like, no, because when they stole from me, you didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it just came out. It wasn't premeditated. I didn't need no storyline. Because I don't, when you talented as we are, you really don't need no storyline. The talent really speaks for itself. And that's not being, you know, vain or anything. That storyline we did not need. But that was, she was saying, oh, my sister needs a storyline. I didn't need a storyline. Mm -hmm. I was being attacked in that scene. That's the only thing that I was like, let me get up out of I'm, I'm drowning. Let me get out of it. Y'all stole from me. That was my life jacket. And mm -hmm. I put that life jacket on and got kicked out the house. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's normally how it goes. Like when you feel attacked, especially during a family situation, when you feel attacked, you go in guns the blazing. Okay, you go in guns the blazing. How I know, because I deal with it all the time on my daddy's side with my immediate family. I ain't fing with half of their ass right now. And that's just the truth. And if you watching, if you know that you ain't one of the ones that I ain't, if you know that you're not a part of those people that I ain't fucking with right now, then you can just shut the fuck up and sit back because it ain't got nothing to do with you. People love to take on problems that ain't got a damn thing to do with them. But that's another story. However, I, I feel her. When you attack and it's a family argument, it goes the down. And I try not to go low with nobody. I really do. But with, girl, when you attack me, I'm going to, I am going to smack you. I'm going to smack the fuck out of you with my mouth. I don't get violent. No more. And when I feel myself about to, about to wring your neck, baby, I got to walk away. I'm going to tell you, like back in May, I got, I was so mad one day and this person was not around me. For me to snap their neck. I was furious. Like I was heated. If I would have seen them anywhere. I would have done bodily harm to them. That was just how mad I was. This is why I don't like to do the whole. Arguing with people on the internet. And going back and forth with people. Because I get mad. Like I get mad. That's why I don't speak on shit. That's why I don't talk about certain things on here. That's why I don't do none of that. Because I don't like confrontation. That's number one. I don't like arguing. And I don't like blasting my business or anybody else's business out there. So a lot of the times when I'm upset and when I'm extremely angry, it goes to another level. My whole body gets hot. My voice gets extra deep. I start talking with my hands. I'm punching my hand. I'm doing all this while I'm talking. I would do somebody some harm in certain situations. That's why I avoid stuff like that. So leave me alone. If I'm if I, if I'm not fucking with you, leave me the fuck alone. Don't don't go picking on me. Don't go throwing your shade. Don't go doing none of that. Because if I ain't fucking with you, I ain't fucking with you. Leave me the fuck alone. Okay. That's why I don't like arguments. That's why I don't even address stupid ass muff. I don't. Cause it, it'll go left. I'm telling you. I think the other part of that is like to, to just be, you know, when I look at everything that's been said, obviously everybody, you, you know, you and your sister, everybody recognized that's a family situation, but other people got blamed for that coming up. Everybody want to say, oh, Mona Scott was causing the drama. Nobody knew she that you were going to say this. Nobody knew I was going to get attacked in that first scene. Nobody knew that. We really, they were trying to make us go to the church mm -hmm. that first thing. They were trying to make us go to church. And I was like, I'm not going to church for us to sit here and talk about family issues when I already know where it could go. Like I was 
been doing that. So, like, my mom and my sister were like, oh, I was being selfish. I wouldn't have been in church. And I was so glad we did not get to go to the church with that. That pastor would have been so embarrassed. Never Everybody would have been so embarrassed. It just didn't make sense to go to the church. After I left, it was like everything that I, as a child, you know, you, start, you, you try to block things out of your memory, things that you've gone through. It was like everything just came up. And mm. like, I was just being choked all over again. Tamika, I'm tired, mama. And it was just, it was crazy. I'm tired. If you're so tired. I'm tired. You should have come and talked to me. I've been talking to you about it. You know they stole my money. It was real life happening. Ain't nobody stole you know they did. And it's still happening. Even though the show has been over, we are it's still, still going, through going through right now. Do you want to talk about this? Oh no. Girl, what part? Real life that is happening right now at this moment. Okay, so we're still not talking. Right. We're not talking. Even as a group, there's only three of us. Yes. She's not talking to none of us. She changed her number. Um, when I asked my mom for the number, she would say, Oh, she needs her peace. Um, she wasn't ready to talk to me. I'm like, she would think that I did something to her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I started feeling guilty for something I didn't even do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, whenever she's ready to talk to me, then I guess we could we could figure it out. But in the interim, I needed my peace. And I didn't realize it until after the you know, time went by and I started healing and I started feeling feeling free about certain situations i was like well dang that piece wasn't just for her it was for me too oh for sure because i mean i just kind of feel like for a long time you have always latasha is not speaking to nobody in the group she's not speaking to a sister she's not speaking to can you know candy tiny she ain't talking to none of them at this point and she feels betrayed by all of them in this point you know what i mean like but at the end of the day you the one who decided to act a damn fool on this show you you the one who decided to do that in the midst of you trying to put out a gospel album all we're doing is seeing your behavior from the things that you did in 1998 and 99. It's just that now we're seeing it in real time. Imagine if they had social media in 98 when all this stuff and all that turmoil was going on with the group. Imagine. Let's continue, y'all. Let's continue on. Always suppressed your feelings or played down what your likes, your dislikes, what you wanted, what you needed for the sake of supporting your sister. Right. And in this moment of filming the show, it was just basically like, you know what? I'm tired of that. This is me. This is who I am. And I'm not bowing down anything I want to do for the sake of your feelings anymore. Right. Because bowing down was making me neglect my children, my grandkids, my husband. Mm -hmm. Like when you put somebody in front of your husband and your kids, then that's more important. And it mm -hmm. got to a point where, okay, this is not because I'm lacking in this area. They're lacking in this area, and I can't do that no more. I'm not little sister anymore. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm not the little one anymore. I, I am, I'm your sister, but I'm not little sister. Two questions. This is a twofold question. Okay. Since we're talking about the now, then what people are getting blamed for. I've seen people blame the show, blame you or blame us or whatever, for Latasha's album not being able to do what it needed to do. How do you feel about that? Well, first of all, I don't know if everybody knows, but that was that was supposed to be me and her deal. But well, that's why I was going to ask you about that. Was oh, okay. part of the question. Of all, <laughs> but go ahead, you answer it. Her um, our old management got us the deal. She came down to my house. We sat, we talked, and I was like, I just feel like we because she had started going to the studio write songs, and I'm like, I want to write too. Mm -hmm. Like I write too. So everybody know we know that the money comes from writing. So let's not be selfish. Mm -hmm. So we talked, and she was like, Well, no. I said we should split everything down the middle. She's like, Well, I'm the writer. You know, I'm the I'm the entertainer. I'm the singer. You can act. You you know stick to acting. Let me write. It was like she started getting mad, and I was like, No, we need to split it down the middle. Let's just be. Let's be fair about the whole situation. And then after she left the house, my house, she never mentioned it again. And that was way before we fell out of Vegas. Before we started filming as well. Right, before we started filming. Mm -hmm. And never heard of it. So I guess we wasn't doing it. Going to the other question, I don't know. I guess the show and people seeing how she was on the show, like if you go back and see the show, every time we tried to do business, mm -hmm. it was, I don't want to hear, I don't want to talk about it. I got to pray about it. Instead right. of just being honest and say, hey, I got a deal. I'm not really messing with y'all right now. Y'all go ahead and do what y'all got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. Mm -hmm. But instead, it's like we were being strong along, stringing along. Hey, string somebody along. Yeah. And that was the only thing, that was the thing that I didn't really like because um, realistically, when we start, first started filming, I didn't know, and I don't think Tiny knew. Well, I don't even know if you knew that she had a deal in place because you didn't know that the no. deal that you two had that she was going on and doing by herself. Right. So we didn't know. She said this on multiple occasions that the that the deal that was had was supposed to be for the both of them. And when Tamika said that she wants to write, Latasha said, "You act, bitch." What? This is the reason why I don't want to do business with my siblings. I'm going to be 100% real with y'all. People might get mad, but I don't give a fuck. One of my brothers want to do like a podcast with me. I don't want to do no podcast with him. <laughs> I don't want to. I got my reasons for not wanting to. I'm serious about my... Sh and I'm serious about my... And I'm sensitive about my... So... I don't play about my work. Like, I don't play about nothing that I do. Like, when it comes down to these panels, I don't play. I be dead ass about my stuff. I'm, I'm very sensitive about my work. I don't play about my channel. I've been growing this shit for the last three years. It's been doing very well. I, I'm always looking for the next big thing. I don't want to do that. I could probably do it with my baby brother. 
but I don't want to do that with that particular sibling. I don't want to because I don't think they serious. So when you hear about family members doing that shit, it's just, it's just kind of like, no. See, this is why I don't want to do it because they think that they can walk all over you because you family and because that's my sister, that's my brother. No, you cannot walk all over me because I know more about this than you do. And on top of that, no, you don't. No, absolutely not. You cannot sit up here and tell me that we're going to do a gospel album together and that we can't split it all down the middle. If we're two sisters and we're a duo and we're doing this gospel record, wouldn't it be smart for y'all to split it all down the middle? Both of y'all write. Both of y'all can sing. Why not just split it down the middle? Why, you know... <sighs> Tasha, girl. And the fact that your own sister didn't even know that you had a fucking record deal is, is just speaks volumes to me. No, coming into filming that she was working on an album. All we knew was, oh, okay, we're supposed to, the ultimate goal of this show, what we thought was for all of us to do a performance together. But every time the conversation of a performance came up, she was like, she didn't know she wanted to do it. And it was just like, you guys may not know this from watching, but it took like two months for her to make a decision. And it, it filmed it one, but three months, right? right? So it took like two months for her to finally give us an answer on if she was going to perform with us or not for the sake of the show. But it was just kind of like weird because it's like, okay, the whole purpose of signing on to this, we knew we were supposed to be trying to do a show at the end. So we didn't understand that. And then when it finally came out, right. just a show, and a tour. Right. And when it finally came out that she was doing her own thing, I was like, okay, cool. But that shouldn't have had anything with her stopping this or slowing down this process. Right. But she could do both. And Tiny told her that. Mm -hmm. Tiny's like, you can do escape and do your solo project. I, but on the show, they actually never showed her telling you guys. Like it never came full circle. Was there a point that they just left out? Like, did she ever actually tell you I got a deal? Mm -mm. We heard through other people. So she never, she never came to us and said, I have a deal. Yeah, I don't think we ever. Because the show didn't show it, but I didn't know if it happened. Mm -hmm. Did she? I don't think she so. She didn't come to us and tell us she got a deal. We didn't even know. We kept sitting there waiting every scene, like, okay, what are we doing? Are we going to move on? And she's like, we got, me and got issues. We're so like, right. okay, we got issues, but business people go to work every day with issues, but they go to work and do their job. Exactly. They go home and deal with their issues. And that's what I was saying about because at first she was trying Okay, to so Latasha still didn't tell them that she had a solo deal. They had to find out through other people. So Latasha never just sat them down and said, okay, y'all, I'm about to do a solo album. When you are part of the group and you're a part of a collective, you have to do that. You have to be in communication. Anything that I do with JoJo, Jamar, or T, or even Maddie, because the only thing that I do with Maddie is Boys Night Out. I do a lot with Jamar. I do the prelude with Jamar. I do the chasing reality panel with Jamar. I do boys night out with Jamar. T and Jojo, I do boys night out with them. I do the chasing panel, T a part of that. I do roast and review with them. I do the whether you like it or not panel with them. We have to be in constant communication about everything. If one can't make it, we got to be in communication with that. If they don't want to do the show, we got to be in communication with that. If they don't have time to do the show anymore, we have to be in communication with that. If they can only show up as a as a as a guest panelist here and there, we have to discuss that. You can't just be in a collective and not let your people know that you're planning to do something solo. And there's nothing wrong with doing something outside of the collective, but just let them know so it won't look shady trying to make it seem like it was some issue with me. And I'm like, girl, we don't even really be talking like that no more. They cut it out. Yeah, they did they cut, cut it out. They cut it out. Yeah. But originally, when we had that meeting at Tiny's house, um, you and her was in full blown. Y'all weren't really talking at that point. But she made that whole conversation like her issue was with me. And I'm like, and you remember when I was like, why are you worried about her? You need to be worried about trying to get it with your sister. Like, yeah. your sister. you worried about being friends with Candy. What about your sister? Yeah, they I was, cut all that out. Yeah, they took it out. I was so <laughs> confused. I was like, yeah, you ain't even had no argument lately. Why are you, why are you trying to turn this on me? So honestly, I just kind of felt like her, I felt like her goal was to come into the show, making me the enemy again. And I think she was so trying to. Be, up on us. Well, so. Tiny said, I don't know if you remember, she said that she felt like from their conversation that she was upset because we got back close. We'll get close. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't know why it's a that is an issue or a problem. We're close before we get escape. Right. I don't know why it's an issue or a problem. I personally feel like it's a good thing that you and I have come close again. I thought we went through to be able yeah. to get back to a place where we enjoy being around each other and have fun right. together. Yes, so I was like, I don't understand why it's a problem. I don't think it's hurting anybody. I've always felt like a part of the issues that Latasha and Tamika are having is because Tamika and Candy are back cool again. Not just cool, but they are close like they were before they got an escape. And it may be an issue for Tasha because Tasha never liked Candy. But what does that have to do with you? My friend, my sister is friends with people that I don't like. And I got some friends that she don't like. 
And what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You can be, you can date motherfuckers I don't like. You can be friends with motherfuckers I don't like. So you can deal with this friendship I got with a mother that you don't like for no mother reason. In a discussion. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. You can't tell me what I can be friends with. Get the out of here. Okay, period. Like, but let's continue. But I don't know. No, I don't think so. I think it's safe to say that that's not the case. <laughs> You're funny. Um, you are funny. No. That helped you guys bond 36 cities. I think it helped us. Yeah, definitely helped us bond and, and get back close again. Definitely, for sure. But I think we initially always had a bond. I felt like we had to get over the turmoil of the drama that, you know, that one moment and get, you know, get past that. Once we did, it was like old times again, I guess, you know. Right. Yeah. So, so I, I personally feel like I don't know if it would have did the same magic. <laughs> Other way around. I do think that she probably wanted to make this show an opportunity for her music, which she should, mm -hmm. you know, that's normal. You're supposed to promote what you got going on. But I do feel like with the drama of the show, obviously it does affect. Yeah, it affects it. it does. Personality, how you come in, how you treat everybody. Because you also have escape, uh, SWB fans too. So you have SWB fans saying, okay, what are we doing? Y'all gonna do it or not? We see him wait for you to make a decision. Did you pray about it? So you have their fans, you have escape fans, and they want the music. They don't want the drama. And I'm sorry we brought the drama. I was not trying. I was just trying to save my life in that scene. And I, I was not. I promise y'all, I was not. I didn't come. I came thinking it was going to make up. And it was going to be a great show overall. Mm -hmm. But was I sadly mistaken. And it just continued and continued and continued until this day. It's still going on. All right. So is there a fix? Is there a fix? I, time <laughs> <laughs> I say time. You I say, need ther group therapy. I tried to take. I, I asked my mom and my sister to go to therapy. But they only feel like I need it. Because did you hear it? When she was going around doing her interviews, mm -hmm. they didn't think I'm crazy. Wait. <laughs> she all her interviews are oh my sister always had issues. She lashed out. You see what she did to Candy. I'm like, you know why I did that. It was like for you. I did me and you never had an issue. And then for her to throw that up in my, my loyalty, my you know what I'm saying to her for what I did to you in my face, that was like a smack in the face with a hit. It was definitely a smack in the face. And I even said that when I was covering all the escape stuff. And a lot of you guys came to my channel due to the escape stuff. Thank you guys for that. Y'all gave me a big ass check in March. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. However, I thought that was crazy too. Because she definitely did try to play that shit down. I was like, you saw what she did to Candy. You saw what she did to Candy. You know she'll lose Candy because you saw what she did to Candy. How are you going to say some bullshit like that? And you are the reason why she was doing it. Wrong as it was, she did it for you. You was fine with it back then. So what you find, what, what, what you throwing in her face in that for? A slap in Tamika's face. Just a big ass smack in her face. Like, <laughs> Latasha cannot smack that girl more than she already has, child. It's a hot mess. Let's continue on. With a handful of ass. Mm. You know what I mean? When I saw that, it's like my heart was like, oh my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, are we doing this? Like, you called me crying in the phone. You called me saying, Candy said, oh, Tasha broke up the group. And crying, crying. I'm like, okay, I'm about to go get her. I'm going to attack. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. You know what I'm saying? It was mm -hmm. wrong. We never had issues. And now you, th you throwing this up in my face. Oh, she lied. You know how she do. Oh, she's crazy. So I'm like, mm. that right there was like, yeah, you still be looking at all her interviews. Well, yeah, because people be sending it to me because she's talking about me. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. Like mm -hmm. I'm out of control. Uh, I don't hold myself accountable. I'm like every time I hurt somebody or say something, if I knowingly, I'm gonna apologize. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna sit here. So I didn't do it. I did do it. And if I did it and I finished, I'm sorry. Like I'll, I'm not gonna do it again. I hold myself accountable. She has never in life. I have never in life gotten an apology for her. But nothing is swept under the rug. Well, my thing is, it's like I've been asked multiple times. Mm -hmm. Like, is there any way? I know how that feels when you got a sibling that never takes accountability, or you got a family member that never takes accountability for anything that they do. They think that they can talk to you crazy they can say hurtful things to you they can violate your space they can do all the things in the world to violate you as a person but you're supposed to take it and just move the f on not give up about what the f you said and no apology absolutely no mother apology you're just supposed to keep on pushing pushing on like nothing ever mother can happen and that's just not the way the world turns honey not for me because i don't forget I spend way too much time owning up when I'm wrong. Owning up when I may have done something wrong or where I may have made a misstep or something like that. I'm always the one that's, I'm, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry for making you feel like I did that to you. I'm sorry for making you feel, for, for hurting you. I'm sorry. I'm always saying that. But motherfuckers don't give me no motherfucking sorry about nothing that they do. I'm supposed to take it. And when I blow the fuck up on your on your motherfucking ass, then I'm wrong. 
It, it always been like that for me. And I ain't even talking about no friendship shit because I don't really have those type of problems. Now I have done, I have, I have had issues in really in friendships where I may have said something wrong and I didn't know that, that, it, that it hurt someone. And I had to go back and apologize or I made somebody feel slighted and I wasn't trying to, or things like that. Because as I said on house of Aaron, I know that I have a character flaw or two and I can own it. Sometimes I'm not aware of the things that I do. And when people tell me that they were hurt by my actions, I can apologize. Now, if I know that I didn't do shit wrong, I'm not going to apologize to you. Like, it is what it is. Whether you hurt or not, I know I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm not fucking apologizing. If I know I wasn't wrong, if I know that, like, if I, if I genuinely know that I didn't do shit to you, I'm not motherfucking apologizing. And that's just it. But when I know that I could have possibly hurt you or said something out the way, because I know my mouth, how my mouth can be or, or the way I speak, it can come across so wrong. I have, I've had to apologize many a times for that. <laughs> I've had to apologize many a times for that. So I get it. I understand. If you guys ever, you know, fix things or whatever, whatever. And I just be trying to figure out, like, I don't know how. But that's why I just threw the question to you, because I know that's a question that people ask all the time. Even the business part, we have to respect each other as business women. And if we, as business women, say we're not involving our husbands, you can't throw your husband down our throat and make us have to deal with somebody who's taking money from us or taking money under the table. It's not fair to us. Mm -hmm. So you don't respect us as business women. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like until she realized that Edward Stillman did not have anything to do with <laughs> oh, our business, it's not gonna work because we've all said it multiple times. Not Edward Stiller hands. Not <laughs> Not Elwood yeah. Stiller hands. She's still gonna run with it. I cannot with Tamika, honey. I cannot with Tamika. She be she, the shade just be running right off her lips. I said it. Tiny said it. No, we have a manager. We have people in place to handle escape business. Outside of escape, we have other people handling our individual business. Mm -hmm. But it's like until you respect us as business women, he's not coming on board. It's, if you think he's coming on board, it's not gonna happen. Okay. Oh, fairness. I have to ask you a question. That she <laughs> said when I wasn't around. She said that you guys were just fine and that y'all had him managing your affairs uh, as a group. Was not managing our affairs. We had a we had a deal in place. Whoever brought uh, shows to the table would get a percentage, good commission. Okay. That was the deal that everybody knew about. Okay. So you had Tina bringing stuff to the table. Mm -hmm. You had he brought stuff to the table. But when Womack brought seven shows to the table, she turned it down. When my what? husband brought shows to the table, she turned it down. The first time Womack brought seven shows to the table, her husband said, "Oh, ain't nobody eating up my wife." Yeah. And we was like, do you think that's fair? That's not fair that he can bring something to the table and get commission. But then when everybody else brings something to the table, she said, oh, it's a no for me. And it started getting, that's when things started getting kind of crazy. But mm -hmm. because, come on, everybody's trying to bring stuff. So it was like, mm, everything was like, it's a no, it's a no. And Tiny's like, man, forget this. Like, it was, it just didn't make sense. Was he double mm -hmm. dipping, you think, Sam? Getting his commission and the other thing he was getting? Ain't no telling. I think, you know, more so than anything, it's just the point of, okay, so what are you saying? It only works if, if only works brings when he brought stuff to the table. Well, that was something that was happening when I was not there, right. to be was, clear. And when I was we there, knew, we knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we knew, okay, if you bring this to the table, Tina will start, she started bringing, like, it started, it started going like this. You know, allegedly, you know, I was told that he was like, well, I need to get commission off this. If my stuff that she was bringing to the table, she was commissioned, giving him some of her commission. For what? Because he was going to let Tasha perform. It was double yeah. Yeah, see, but see, that's, okay. So I saw some people in the comments were like, well, if somebody brings me, why is your name? Okay, so for me, this is this is the thing. We as a group, because we're in the group, right, people different. automatically call us. Like, people call me all the time or call, you know, my team or whatever to book the group, right? If I was to say, I'm not doing any shows but the ones that my team controlled or that we booked, then that wouldn't be fair, correct? You know, so the way you keep it fair is just like, okay, if you get something, we as a group members or our personal teams, we just throw it to Managing the representation the whole and group. just keep it clean because... Right. Just because sometimes the same person may call you and they may call me, but I, they may have just uh, called me first. I may have just picked up the phone first. So who gets the commission then? No. no. It's like you only allow the manager to get commission. And then on top of that, it's just, you know, you don't allow, you can't, in a, in a group, you got to have an equal balance of power. If one person feels like they can control the rest, then that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. When we was with, when we was three of us, we didn't have management. But mm -hmm. we came back with four of us. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We had just, well, towards the end of, that's when the management. That's when y'all picked the. That's when, right, it was towards the end. Mm -hmm. That's when the other management came in. But that's when you was brought in quickly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, mm -hmm. we need handy bag. Man, Tony's like, what? <laughs> we, no disrespect. We was like, she doing her thing. Like you was doing what you. You wasn't even trying to. Talk right, to and me. then y'all didn't have to put the money with me, so y'all was good. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. It's, it's no, okay. it's not that you wasn't. You wasn't trying to come back at that time. Right. No, she was I, doing your own thing at the time. It wasn't no drama. Yeah. No. 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 It wasn't no, no drama. Mm -hmm. We knew what it was. You said no, and that's what it was. So we kept going. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, in the midst of us keep going, us you know keeping the train rolling. It was her and her husband's idea to bring you back. And you didn't know why until we saw the text messages. Because <laughs> many times, like, I don't think she want to come back. Well, I don't think she want to come back right now. All this stuff with the business, 
and you still want to sit up here and defend Rocky and make it seem like he ain't did no wrong, Tasha. The proof is in the motherfucking pudding, honey. Your husband is shysty. And you just as shysty for be going along with his shit. And Tamika husband brings shows, you don't want to do it. Somebody else brings shows, you don't want to do it. But when Rocky brings the shows, then it's okay to do it. You know, that don't make no motherfucking sense. Y'all are out for y'all selves. But then when I say, ain't nobody finna eat off my wife, but your wife can eat off everybody motherfucking else. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Okay. The text messages told a lot. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when you saw that? Did you feel like you got got? Yes, I did. Okay, so the text messages we're referring to is when um, Tamika got text messages from the promoter that was between him and Rocky, and basically the text messages was letting us know that the promoter was paying. They had a side deal agreement where they was giving him extra money to get all four of us to show up for a show. But the crazy part about the side deal was when you came back, the money dropped. Mm -hmm. So we was like, we was making more money without it. What is going on? But the side deal was the money that it dropped to. Right. So let's just say, for instance, I'm just, I'm not giving you exact numbers, but let's say if there was, the group was. Rocket was doing it. He was doing it, girl. Baby. He a shysty little mother. Ooh. It was getting 200000 a show and then all this stuff. I'm not saying exactly what yeah, I'm just to guess. They've been trying to get oh, wait, I'm not saying exact numbers. Oh, go ahead. I mean, not using exact numbers. I'm giving them an example. So if you say, oh, you know, you got two hundred thousand dollars a show, and then that person it comes back and was like, Oh, well, no, and, you know, I can only give you guys one seventy five. But then later on you find out that they already had a side deal between them where that person was getting twenty five. You're like, wait, hold on. So basically you're telling me that we can get what we were supposed to get, but really it's because they're having to pay you right. part of our money. Everybody's there, right? Right, which that that was very upsetting. Because at the end of the day, um, I don't know what they had agreed to when I wasn't there, but that was already understood that we do not do no side deals where nobody should be getting any side because of extra money that nobody else knows about. Right. Um, and you weren't going to do business with Rocky. Yeah, and I had already said it from clear. the very jump, I didn't want to have any involvement with anything that Rocky was right. a part of. You made it very clear. So to me, I just felt like, oh, so, and it's the, the text said something about she was going to get us to do whatever she wanted us to do. And so it just made us sound like some little dummies that she was able to leave. You all was and Just leave it <laughs> along, drag it along. We, we just followed up to whatever she wanted to do. We got to stay together. Look at the bigger picture. They kept saying, look at the bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture. <laughs> That was um for me, it was it's in the group. But for the group too, I think everybody was upset, and I think I was a little bit um a little bit more upset that when she saw the text that she still acted like it wasn't real or something. Like like we were tripping. Like we were shocked. She called him. Yeah, yeah. But when she called, he was like, "You ain't got to talk to me. You ain't like in other words, you ain't got to do this because she had her deal. You ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to deal with that." How did you feel when you first saw the text? Girl, I was pissed because the, the story is deeper than that, which mm -hmm. I can't really. I don't know about to talk about it, but it was other people that. It could have got affected by, oh, I'm thinking about the other part, the threat, when he threatened the promoter. Oh, those text messages, those yeah, are different. Yeah, when he threatened the promoter after the promoter said he won't give him more money, he threatened the promoter. And then after he threatened the promoter, when the promoter spoke to us, he said, you know, the reason why he didn't know black dress because y'all. Yeah, they, they both because them. what yeah. he said. Yeah. Every action is a reaction. So she went around and was like, oh, he threatened, him. He threatened my, my husband. Like, no, your husband threatened him first. And in the issue of that, somebody else got put into that. They could have went left. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, why is it always an issue? Like, yeah, so anyway, it's needless to say, it was it was a Rocky is full of motherfucking shit, honey. He is full of it. He's the he's the biggest problem. I'm starting to believe that Tasha ain't the biggest problem. I'm starting to believe it's Rocky. Because he's the one putting shit in her head, but she's stupid enough to follow what he's saying. You feel what I'm saying? Girl, 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 girl. This shit gets crazy and crazy as the days go by. I'm telling you, as, as the months go by, as the days go by, all of it go by. It's 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 motherfucking crazy, child. It is. I got I gotta be honest with you. It is. Rocky is a shisty ass showboat of a businessman. You just gotta be honest about it. They're they're both for themselves, both Tasha and Rocky, both of them motherfuckers is for themselves. And that's just the goddamn truth. Let's continue. A, it was very messy during the time of filming, and um, a lot of people. Why? But why would you expose your sister like that? Why would you expose her husband? Why would they take from us? Mm -hmm. Why would they steal from us? Like, 
no. I, I, and I still don't understand that how our people, African Americans, because of family, we sweep it under the rug. Right. Because that's uncle, he molested a child. Oh, that's uncle. We can't tell nobody about it. We got to be quiet about it. Or because this person stole, but that's auntie. We got to be quiet because we family. But if family and family, like, we got to get out of that, like, people, we have to get out of that stigma that we got to protect people who don't want to protect you. Mm-hmm. Okay. No word. Everything. Put it on no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That is true and it's, it's a fact. That's all facts. That's all facts. That is all facts. Everything that Tamika just said is all facts. It is that. It is that. I would never do my sister like that. But your sister never stole from you. Your sister trying to blackmail you with a sex tape. People, I would never do my sister like that. Okay, fast forward to that because they're probably gonna miss. They're gonna be like, "What is she talking about?" Okay, so fast forward. Um, not during filming, but lad, that was just a few months ago. During the course of while the show was on air, I don't know if you heard or you didn't hear, but there was like some text that was sent to different people in the group not me i never got the text mm-hmm. you sent to all the blogs yeah it was sent to bloggers and um basically it was saying stuff about right. um yeah they basically were saying like if she didn't take back what she said I apologize to my sister like i apologize to you it was going to release my tape they were going to release pictures that they claimed that i sent to that devil which i did not crack my phone and i have evidence and everything back in back like it was like 2000 and i want to say seven I had got a text message from my phone saying that my, you know how when you change your password. Mm-hmm. So I looked at it, it was like your password successfully changed. So I was like, oh, maybe this is not, you know, I'm not really paying attention. So then I didn't even think about it. Mm-hmm. And further on, later on, like I was there with one of my friends and my friend was like, you might need to check into that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I didn't change my password, but I didn't. So when I made a phone call to the company, they were like, oh yeah, your husband called in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, my husband, by that time, at that time I, would, I had pictures, I had videos because I was dating. I was dating. I wasn't even married. I was divorced at the time. Mm-hmm. So they said your husband and they said Darius Scott. My ex name was Darius. I said, his last name is Scott. I said, um, could you please give me the number? Do you know the number that called? And when they gave me the number, and I wrote the number down, and I put the number in my phone, his name came up. Hmm. So I was like, how? They said he had your social security number. Like, he was your husband. But I'm the only one on the account. It's not like it's two lines. You're talking about Rocky. Right. Hmm. Okay. Right. So now, and then after that, my first husband, who kept cheating on me. Hmm. So he was cheating on me. We were 19, 20 years old. We were young. Got married young. So, okay, he cheated. So I cheated back with hmm. a guy from New Jersey. And uh, me and him start. Had we had a little relationship mm-hmm. he was doing him and I was doing me with this guy from New Jersey. We did a sex tape. And after that, we broke up, but I kept the sex tape because me and my husband got back together and I wasn't taking that tape in the house. Mm-hmm. So I told my sister, just hold on to this. I was like, yeah, baby, what's my name? But anyway, <laughs> I, was, I was wrong. I was that was back in the day. That was back it was in the day. It was back in the day. You can tell me. I didn't do- so anyway, my dumb self um, gave her a tape, told her to hold on to it so I could see it every now and then or whatever. And then I went back to get my tape and she said somebody had sold it out of her safe. So I'm like, how's somebody still out of, my, out of your safe? Like, who else got the, the code? Like, I don't think I locked it that day. Well, who was at your house? You know, like, that's random. Somebody right. still is about your safe. It's only her and her husband had the combination. So I'm like, find my tape. Fast forward to now. I'm being blackmailed by the same tape that she had that she stole. Oh, my gosh. So I'm like, now I got to tell my husband now. I got to tell my kids. I, my kids, my grown kids, you know, when I talk mm-hmm. to them, it's like, well, you know, don't even worry about it. But then I have a 90-year-old. So the text message said, if I don't apologize and say that I lied about the money that was taken from me, then that text message, gonna, my um, picture's going to be released and my tape is going to be released. And then they said they was going to say some stuff about uh, the rest of us That's in the group, too. But mm-hmm. it was crazy because my sister husband did a, he was being recorded. So right. that was the same time everybody got. Okay, it. so we were all wondering when the whole notion of the SEX tape was talked about. We were all wondering, why would you leave a tape like that with your sister? Because I would never, ever, because I am a freak, I would never, ever leave any type of recording that I did with some man that it was a sexual act. I would never leave that with none of my, with my sister, nor my, I would not leave, I would not leave that with them. For what? That's just, uh, I don't want them to see me in that position. Absolutely not. Okay, no. I would never do that. But I see why she did it because it was a tape that she made with a dude that she was no longer, that she was messing with while she was married. Her and her husband were both cheating on each other. She get, They both got their licks back. She was getting her licks in on the tape. And she decided that when her and her, her husband got back together, she went finna bring the tape in the house so she had a sister keep the tape but my thing is why would why would rocky even go so far to like tap into her phone and do all that other stuff that shit is fucking weird why why do that rocky is motherfucking weird and i know we haven't said much about him in a couple of months but he weird for that i i didn't know he could get more weirder than that like he is weird as like seriously, the text, the threatening text. Yeah, he said everything that was on the threatening text. Nothing had been leaked. It was just a threat on this right. text, on this right. text message. But it just 
just so happened. Now, mind you, we weren't even talking to him or Tasha at the time, right? It just so happened that he was doing an interview with the lady saying, oh, yeah, we know what's about to come up next. Big news. The big news. Happy. You know the big news is. Yeah, like, that. Um, around spreading these lies. Yeah, that's a tape and the pictures coming out. He was saying these things that's supposed to come out. And so for us, it was like, okay, clearly you the one that sent the text. Yes, yes because even Freddie O called me. Right. He was like, hey, I, I, so, so yo, what do you say? How do you say? Oh, yo, take your, um, take your way to come out. <laughs> he was laughing. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, I talked to Rocky. Mm. So he called Freddie O. He called Tasha K. And then I got DMs from other people I didn't even know are bloggers. They were like, I'm just laying on your sister and her, your husband. And I got all of that in my DMs. They called around telling people about this tape and this. Mm. And if you're ready to come out, just give you the heads up for your family. I ain't trying to be funny that, but had that been my dude. And I not knowing that he did an interview about my group members and my sister lying. You know what I mean? You trying to black me about I would be in his ASS like white and rice. Yeah. I wouldn't be sitting there allowing this to happen. And mm. then it would be a phone call. I don't care. We ain't talking. Hey, let me tell you something. I don't know what's going on, but I ain't got nothing to do with this. Right. So when you're quiet, you're just as guilty. Uh, I've been saying that. <laughs> so we were teenagers. I've been saying that. And it's I agree. I I agree. Oh, funny. You know what is so funny to me? And I don't even all the craziness that we've dealt with over the years, like we haven't even people be Once like, again, oh my God. I agree. The fact that she it was quiet as a church mouse when Rocky was doing all that BS. Let's me know that she was in on the shit. Can't nobody tell me nothing different. She was in on the mother shit. It's just the truth. She was in on the mother shit. Period. You know your man doing it and you ain't gonna say nothing about it. Oh, okay, Tasha. Girl. Oh my god, y'all had so much going on. Y'all don't even know what to have. Like it's still way more stuff that we have dealt with that we haven't even talked about on um you know, publicly or whatever. And I'm just like, for me, a lot of this stuff is just like, y'all seeing this now and y'all feeling this now, but this been going on since we were teenagers. A lot of people always say, what would be different now than um, when y'all first came out if it was social media? I'm like, y'all would just- <laughs> Child, we would have made the blog so many times and we would have yeah, been girl. done. What? I don't know how we would have made it with it if the blogs would have been yeah, happening back then. Girl. So, you know, I hate to make this a thing of you know, talk about that because, it, you know, clearly you haven't been talking about it in the public for since the show has been off. But, you know, a lot of people have been asking for you to come and do speak on it. So clearly I wanted you to speak on it. Yes. With that being said, okay, now people ask me, what are we going to do about this name, child? <laughs> Legally, you and your yes. sister own the name of Skate. Right. So back in 2016, my sister gave me a call right before we got back together. Mm -hmm. She was like, hey, she was like, um, Candy and Tiny tried to own the name and they, the paperwork they did fell through. Now, no. since it, it was, it was a paperwork. I saw the paperwork. It was your name, Tiny name. I think it was it was attached to Tina. I can tell you exactly what happened. Because I wasn't even really doing it. No, right. um, Let me tell my you tell you. Okay, you go ahead. So she was like, they had they were trying to get the name, but it fell through. She was like, she didn't have the money at the time. And it's probably the only why my name was on there. Mm -hmm. She said, we can get the name. I don't have the money, but I would pay you back if you do it. Both of our names can go on there. So I pay for it. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the only reason why my name is on there right now. So pay for it. We got the name, did the paperwork, and mm -hmm. then we own the name. Now, once we came back together, mm -hmm. we were supposed to add y'all names on there. Mm -hmm. This piece of paper that we were supposed to sign. Mm -hmm. Tina drew up the paperwork, mm -hmm. and I signed my part. Mm -hmm. Tina signed her part. Okay. But y'all forgot about it because we started touring. Right. And things started going on, so y'all never mentioned it again. Mm -hmm. And when y'all did mention it again, it came back up. It was like, okay, so what we're going to do, we need to add their names. I was like, right. we need to add their names. And she was like, well, I add a tiny name. I was like, you can't do that. <laughs> <everybody's laughs> no, she didn't sign it. So you're the only name on there then? It's just me and her name. Oh, mother name. Yeah. So now we have the, the attorney have drawn up paperwork where we have to sign to bring everybody. Right now, we're the only ones doing shows. Mm -hmm. So it's only fair that everybody's name goes on the paperwork because we are mm -hmm. the same as four. It's the ball is in her court. She's going to sign the paperwork. Good show. <sighs> anyway, um, some years back, I'm out of my own business, honey. And I believe Tiny's mom, maybe Tina and Tiny's mom, I don't know. They were like, oh, we're going to file for the trademark. We're going to put your name on there. Um, I, I was like, all right. Mm -hmm. So I guess they put me and Tiny's name on there. And she didn't paperwork. It fell through. Something she didn't I thought they did it, but they didn't renew it. Oh, I don't know. It just kind of like now. You just so she came to me and said, Yeah, I had the name, but it didn't go through. She showed me the paperwork. And so she was like, you know, just give me money and then we put our name on it. I still didn't get my money back from it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's yours. You pay for what you pay for it, but she muted it. When we first asked her about doing shows, the name or whatever, her team or whatever. Whatever said move forward. Yes. She hit us back about it. I was like, I thought, you know, since we did a different name when Candy went there, y'all should have a different name when we there. And we sent her the screenshots of what her, this is before she changed her number, y'all. <laughs> <Right. laughs> we sent her the screenshots of what her team said. And then she was like, oh, okay. Well, the reason well. why we had talked to her team because she wasn't responding to us. Right. We were having our own. This, we were no, having, but then she responded and said, yeah, she okay. She responded, but a long time, a lot of times she did not. We oh, were, yeah, a majority of times we she were did. talking and talking and talking, and she didn't respond. So that's when, when she did respond, they also reached out to her own personal management. At the mm -hmm. time. So it was like not just her on it, but her and her manager. Right. So then she said something about when, you know, we done doing the shows with the promoter that we were working with, that she wanted to be a part of the shows again. That's what she was saying. 
when we were promoting the TV show. But they you also said that they were going to be, she was booked up this whole year and then her management team. No, that was, that was when we was doing shows at the end of last year. I'm talking about, but I'm talking about this year when we was promoting the TV show right before the show aired and she was doing those interviews with us and you got mad on the red carpet and it was started going, Girl. oh my God. Maybe you didn't hear what she said. Oh my gosh, I had blank, blank out. Like, we She's doing like, this right now? She's like, they asked a question. She's like, if my sister stopped disrespecting my mom, I'm like, I didn't disrespect your mom. It's always my mom. It's not our, it's never our, it's always mine. It was, it just got to the point, like we're here, all these reporters and you trying to show your ASS. So what I did, I said, okay, to make it before you, Child, I don't know what happened. Let me go back and put this back up here. I kind of rewinded it back just a little bit to the part to where it stopped it. I don't know what happened. This is why I can't stay in StreamYard sometimes, but we finna get back into it, y'all. Let me make it. Okay, there we go. Is it popping up? Is it popping up? Because I don't know. There we go. All right. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know what happened. That was when we was doing shows at the end of last year. I'm talking, year. About, I'm talking about this year when we was promoting the TV show right before the show aired. And she was doing those interviews with us and you got mad on the red carpet and it was started going, Girl. oh my God. Maybe you didn't hear what she said. Oh my gosh. I had blank, blank out. Like, we she's doing this right now? She's like, they asked a question. She's like, if my sister's not disrespecting my mom. I'm like, I didn't disrespect your mom. It's always my mom. It's not our. It's never our. It's always mine. It was, it just got to the point, like, we're here, all these reporters and you trying mm -hmm. to show your ASS. So what I did, I said, okay, to make it before you go black and black out, I just walked away. You know what I mean? Being a bigger person, I walked off and I cooled off. And then I came back and joined y'all for the rest of the interviews. But that was just, it's like, she knows how to push my buttons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which brings me back to. <laughs> I, didn't, I must have walked off. I ain't here. You didn't hear her say that. The only thing I remember when her management team last year, we were trying to do the shows in December last year. They said she was booked up the whole year, which would mean this year. And they would let us know when she's ready. Her but that's, that's true. They said it. Her management team have not came back and said she's ready. Was but even if they did right now with the the problems and blackmail and the <laughs> talking about your members saying this person can't sing, this person sound nasally, this person, like you're going on a, uh, she's going on a tour, a dogging out escape tour. You said a dogging out escape tour. It's like, okay, <laughs> you're talking about this person's vocals, you're talking about, but when she talks about that show, Tiny's her girl, was a girl. Mm -hmm. So if you, Tiny wasn't even off limit. So it's like, what are we doing? I'm crazy, she nasally, you can't sing, what's next? And you change your numbers. So, oh, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel, exactly. But you're saying it so, because I think by her saying that on the red carpet, that was her speaking for her management, that she's ready. Do you guys think that you guys are ready to welcome back? I think we need more time. I just say that because, I mean, I agree with what Tamika's saying. It's just kind of like, um, how are we supposed to mend anything when we still haven't had any clarity oh, on, you know, the, the the money thing that, and I'm not even talking about the job money thing. I'm talking about the stuff that was done on the side for, with the group. We never had any clarity. He said it never happened. Or understanding. They, they both said it never happened. But the text message said it did. We never talked through it because when she was there with us and we were trying to talk about it, she, she kind of like dismissed us. So we never got any, any clarity and understanding. So I feel like that is still weighing. I feel like no, we- I'm just going to go and say it. I'm just going to go and say it. Well, I did a temporary TPO order on my sister and her husband because I was getting threats. I was getting text messages. He even said threats. I felt lied when he said I lied on him and you don't do that to me or you got to deal with what comes with that. So I, I don't take certain things lightly. So I did a temporary TPO order and the judge granted it to me based on the evidence that i presented i was granted the tpo order on them so when you say are we can we get back together it's a tpo order out because he's threatening me and a lot of people and this, this is crazy this is where it gets crazy the tpo order protects me just in case because he's on the pool i don't do this it protects me and it also protects them because my husband is very quiet he's at his wits end it's not easy mm -hmm. my thing is let god deal with let god be the avenger we couldn't miss no her. we don't want because we don't want no threats so we don't it's, want no threat. okay. it's to protect both parties. right to protect both parties my husband is dealing with a lot people are coming at him like Oh, why are you not taking up for your wife? This guy is doing all this. He's blackmailing your wife. He's doing all this. He's doing all that. My husband is a man. It is the hand of God that is keeping him 
at bay to say, okay, I'm going to sit here and let God deal with that. But when you have people that's DMing, you got people sending messages, what type of, how you secure, oh, you talk not security, but you let this do this. All right, we, we sit and we talk. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. I'm just being honest. It's not easy. We sit and we talk and I'm like, you got to think about our money. You going to jail. If you see him and beat him up, what everybody wants, you're going to go to jail. And I got to raise my child by myself. So everybody who's DMing, stop it saying, oh, you need to protect your wife. You need to go beat him up. You need to go. We've gotten messages saying, what type of man are you? That's not easy to sit back all these years. And I say, babe, this is my family. Let me deal with it. And he sit back and, and it's not easy. It's not easy. Will Smith protected his wife. He got attacked. I said, baby, the same people that's coming after us saying you need to do this. We the same ones. Jewelry sentencing you to life. We're sitting, we're praying and we're waiting on God to deal with the situation. It's not easy. But the TPO order is to protect. He don't need to come around me. Hmm. You know, something happened. I already told my kids. If something happened, we know what it is. First of all, my husband ain't going to let it happen. Stay away from me. So it won't happen. Hmm. Because he will, by any means necessary, if he feel like my life is threatened, he's not going to sit there and let me die. Stay over there with your threatened self hmm. and let me stay here. So to answer your question right now, no. It'll just be us three. You guys need time. We need time. Mm -hmm. The group performances. What you feeling about it? I still Still doing shows. <laughs> Girl, I, the, it's like in the dress room, the energy, the way we are. Like, dearly father, thank you for all of our blessings and thank you for bringing us. And that is where it gets so sad for me that it's gotten to that point to where she can't even be around her sister or him because of the threats. And the fact that Latasha was on IG crying on live about this whole situation and she's still allowing her husband to do the things that he's doing, that's a bit much for me. All that crying and you're going to pray about it and it's all about the Lord, this, the Lord, that. Girl, you don't give up about the mother Lord at all, but you just be sitting up here allowing your husband to do all that dirty ass, grimy ass bullshit that he doing to your sister to the point where she got to put that out on you and your husband so she can be safe. And I know a lot of us were wondering why her husband was was pretty quiet in this situation, but I think I get it. You know what I mean? I, I'm sure that he do want to hurt Rocky. He's been talking crazy. I can only imagine what, what's been going on behind the scenes. So I know a lot of people have been wondering, like, why is he not speaking up? It could be a reason why. I know how that feels when you don't speak up about things that people want you to. Sometimes it's best to keep your mother mouth closed because sometimes when you try to speak on things and clear shit up, it makes things worse. So yeah, I understand. Bringing us together to do yet another show together. We there. We're in the back. It's like we're in high school. We laughing. We cracking up. We telling jokes. We in the back trying to come up, dance. You know, the routine practicing. It's just like the sisterhood is here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It feels really, really good. And y'all, y'all chicks. I was about to say y'all hoes. <laughs> y'all chicks be singing down. Every time I be like, okay now. Did I look over? I'm like, oh, 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 this is what we doing right now. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all ain't taking no prisoners. I'm telling you, like, we, we sound really, really good. We've been working hard, rehearsing, got rehearsing today. Mm -hmm. And we, we giving our fans, we giving our fans our best. When people come to the show, they gonna get the show. Because we not laughing. We, we giving our all. And we still mm -hmm. out here doing what we're supposed to do for our fans. And, and we're feeling the love. It feels so good. It feels so good. Hey. <laughs> you feeling good? Feeling good. I want the food tastes good. Thank you. So, I mean, if the goodness has felt down to the food yeah. and the book yeah. and, and, and your seasoning. Yeah. Now, which seasoning is your favorite? I cook with all of them. Which one do you use the most? The all-purpose. You can use all-purpose on everything. I can't keep that in. All-purpose. The vegetables. I use. I put the vegetables in the macaroni and cheese. Oh, okay. Taste the vegetable seasoning for the salmon. It's the, the my sweetener, and I use a little of uh, the Cajun seasoning and a little seafood. And for the cabbage, I did a little of the Cajun, and I did a little of the, the vegetable. All right. So y'all know y'all gotta get the seasonings and the book. Yeah, Southernfuse.com. Now this music. Yes. So you decided to do a single. Yes. It's called Tonight. Now, how was that? And she got Method Man on there. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so um, how did that come together? So Tonight was a song that I wrote. Did you write it by yourself? Did you collaborate? Yeah, I wrote it by myself. Mm -hmm. Of course, Method wrote his part. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it some years back. It's an older song. And then, like, coming off of this show, I was cleaning up one day. And I started listening to the song. And it was like, hey, no drama come away. Tonight I'm going to celebrate. And I was like, you know what? I think I need to celebrate me. Mm -hmm. Because, and I've told Mona this. So I'm not talking about Mona behind her back. I felt slighted because I felt like I want my seasonings and my cookbook to be shown on the, on the show, but it was showing the dysfunction of my family took over. And I just felt like I didn't get a chance to show what I've done outside of the group because we've all done things. And I felt real, real, real proud because I created these spices in my kitchen and mm -hmm. I had to go sit with food scientists. So it's like a process to what I've done. Mm -hmm. And then the cookbook, like I just wanted Tiny cook out of it. Mm -hmm. And you know, she made drinks out of it. Mm -hmm. And they never mentioned what the book was. So mm -hmm. I felt like, and I told her, I was like, that's not fair. That wasn't fair. But she was like, well, you know, you, we have so much stuff that we have to edit, so much stuff that we have to cut down. You got seven women mm -hmm. that we're trying to follow their lives, or whatever. I was like, y'all just come up with it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I feel like this song was saying, okay, just in case nobody celebrates you, I'm going to go out and I'm going to celebrate myself. I'm not thinking about, I'm not stressing. I'm not thinking about no bills. I think about no baby daddy. Like that song is saying, this is my night and this is the night I'm going to celebrate me. So it's tonight. Mm -hmm. So it's a Nas, Nas one mic. 
the song came from Nas One Mike, and I wanted to do like an R&B player. My big brother Method Man heard it, and he was like, "Yo, sis, you killing that bridge, yeah." So he got on it, did his part, and we went to New York and we shot it because he's still filming. Um, mm-hmm. He's filming, so the only day he was off was that day. Mm-hmm. So we shot in New York, we shot it in Brooklyn, um, we shot some parts in New Jersey. We shot it, and it's out. It's available on all digital platforms. That's dope. And it's called Tonight. Ooh. Now, Tamika is just killing the game right now. She got the music, Thank the cooking. You. What you. else you got going? And she doing movies, y'all. Oh yeah, I just did a, a movie that's coming out at the end of the year. It's a Christmas movie, Christmas Ringer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. That is cool. Anything else you got going on? That you want to tell the people about? Uh, young Naya, my daughter, Young Naya, her CD just her EP just came out called Sweet Jill. So they should. So y'all know I'm finna end it right here. Y'all know I'm finna end it right here. This was a good ass speak on it. Probably one of the best ones I've seen. One of the best ones I ever reviewed. It was good. I we you know we've been waiting on Tamika to come through, tell her story, you know, do her thug thizzle. Y'all know I love me some Tamika, and I'm glad that she's celebrating herself. I'm glad that she's coming out of her shell. She seems very free. And sometimes, whether they're family or not, you got to get away from certain people. And sometimes, whether you've been friends with a person for a long time or even shorter, you got to get rid of them. So, like, this is the year of separating yourself from certain people. That that that's just what this is. This, to me, it's the year of separating. And it's been like that. It's like now, it's like for me, I feel like I'm in I'm in some of my best years. I've been doing some of the things that I want to do. And I'm not in the best of places mentally. Y'all know I did do a whole video back in April or May about my mental and how I've been in depression. And I have my good days and I have also have my bad days. I've had a lot of stuff going on, um, you know, but even with all the negative stuff, because there's been a lot of negative stuff. But even with all the negative, there's been a lot of positive stuff. Like, I have a, my platform is now a two-time award-winning platform. It's a two-time award-winning platform. I I was crying. I, I won an award for you two of the year, the Boss Baby Awards, and me and Jamar won the best podcast of the year for the prelude. The same prelude that you saw Candy on, Latrice on, Miss Wanda on, So Gucci on, all these different people. So this is just a year of freeing yourself from all the negativity, all of the bullshit. You know what I mean? It's a lot of stuff. Like I didn't, I just did the W I G E, the what W E I G O podcast on what else is going on podcast. I just did that. I did the motor O motor podcast. I did um another podcast on Spotify. Me and Jamar did a motor O motor podcast. Then you know, um I just did an interview for the Mississippi Free Press. That should be coming out soon. I'm one of the people of the day for the Mississippi Free, Free Press. Like, this is starting to be, I thought last year was a good year. This year's turning out to be an even, even big, bigger year. All the exposure, so much visibility. I understand you, Tamika. Being a black sheep, being a person that didn't wasn't allowed to have an opinion, you seeing us now. So shout out to Tamika. Shout out for Candy for putting this together. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have nothing to talk about. And shout out to everybody, all the Scotty gang that's watching this. And um, I just want to close this by saying, if you are a person that wants to, you know, go after your dreams and do all the things that you want to do, I say go do it. I've been doing YouTube since 2010. Um, Didn't know that I would be here for as long as I have been, but I am. Didn't think I win no awards for any of my work, but I did that. There's a lot that you can do. So if you got something that you really want to do and you got a dream, go after that. And also remember this. I am Scotty by Nature TV, and I am definitely fighting for the boys that never thought that they could win. So with that being said, I am out of here. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, and also click on the notification bell so you can be notified for all videos that's dropping from the Scotty by Nature TV brand. If you're trying to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, IG, and TikTok is down in the description box, all right? Mainly follow me on IG. I'm trying to get the 10K followers. I'm almost at 8K, child, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. But with that being said, I know this was a long-ass video, but I hope y'all enjoyed it, y'all, and I'm out of here to the next one. I'll talk to you later. Bye!